guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Al Castillas, or you can call me Lexi. Today I'm going to be filming my journey to Islam. I am a revert to Islam. And if you are a returning subscriber, you're probably wondering where I'm filming. I'm currently in the guest slash office room. And I recently turned it into a guest room slash prayer room. So I'll flip you guys around and give you a quick tour. Christian Baptist home and I also went to a private school that was Christian Baptist as well as my grandpa on my father's side is a pastor. So around the age of 15 I started questioning things. I didn't want to go to church. Obviously no one in my family was happy about that but they didn't want to force me to go to something that I didn't want to. I'm very thankful for that that they didn't try and push me to go. Um, at first they did and I basically threw a fit until I wasn't going anymore because I couldn't calm myself down like every child probably would at that time and at that age. So a lot of you are asking how old I am now. I am 21. I'm about to be 22. This was about six years ago that I started questioning uh, my faith in religion and why I believed what I did. So after that, I remember one day the thought popped in my head like, why? Why am I believing? You know, like, why have I believed this my whole life? Is it because I grew up and this is what I was taught and what I was told was right? Or do I actually believe in my heart that? you know, this happened and I'm supposed to believe in this and blah blah blah. So after that I started researching a bunch of different religions, not necessarily because I wanted to change mine, but I wanted to get a better understanding not only for my own religion at the time and what those principles were based off of, but also on others. I searched, I remember Buddhism, um, Catholicism, atheism, and I think there was one more, mm, I don't know, if I remember I'll link it down here, but I researched about four different ones, and none of them really made sense to me, there were bits and pieces that I was like, okay, I can agree with that, that, that seems right, but there was never a certain religion that I was studying as well as my own, which was Christian or a Baptist, and none of it made sense to me. I would, like I said, I would agree with some, but not all, and to me personally, that isn't a way for anyone to live or anyone to believe, because for me, it's like I'm all in or nothing, you know what I mean? I didn't want to be cherry-picking. Uh, I didn't want to be interpreting things for my own benefit and things like that. So when I came to 
Islam when I was studying that, it was like a whole light bulb went off in my head. I was like, okay, this is really similar to what I believed when I grew up before I keep discussing um, further topics about Islam. I want to make sure that everyone who is watching knows that this is my own personal opinion and I respect the fact that you may be of a different religious background or believe differently than I do, you know, religious or not. So that is all on you. I'm not saying that I am right and you are wrong. We just believe in different things and that's fine. If you have nothing nice to say, then I would suggest leaving this video now. And if you unfortunately do keep watching and leave any negative comments down below, you will either be blocked or deleted pretty quick. So don't say it, it will warn you. First thing that I came to realization in Islam is that it talks about that there is no abortion. And let me find that verse real quick and I will read it to you. This is 2.256 and it says, There shall be no compulsion in religion. True guidance has become distinct from error. And it goes on to talk about other things as well. Let's say, for example, I've been getting questions a lot about where my hijab went. I did wear it for about two months or so. And I just didn't feel comfortable with wearing something that I wasn't complete, completely um agreeing with and I know that this is a big controversial thing in the Islam society that some people believe, believe that it is something that Muslim women are commanded to wear while others believe that it is told that we should wear it but again it's our own decision so I am on the side where uh, Muhammad it told his wife as well as the other people that they would be advised to wear it but they are not being forced to wear it. That is a decision and it will benefit you. It will give you more good deeds and so on. So again that is my personal belief and if you believe differently that's fine. Another thing that drew me to Islam is like I said there's so many similarities with Christianity and I even wrote down as I've been reading my Quran I wrote down all the people that are mentioned in this Quran as they are mentioned in the Bible um, and they're mentioned in the same way so there's stories like uh, the Pharaoh and his people being made to worship the calf uh, Adam and Eve they were the first two people on earth Noah and the boat Jesus uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, Jonah, David and Goliath, King and Abel, Isaac and his wife, Lot, and it just keeps going. One of the many things that I found really beautiful about Islam is that it talks about how we're supposed to be respectful of other people's religions and other people's, um, like their sides, what side they, they reside on, whether it be through religion, politics, um, whatever you want and it even says in 1041 if they should reject you say my deeds are mine and your deeds are yours you are not accountable for my actions nor I am accountable for what you do as Muslims are supposed to be respectful we're supposed to be honest with everyone we're supposed to be very straightforward gentle polite um, and actually if you I flip you around, on that window there, it has the 10 Quranic commandments. I'll read those off to you. It says, speak kindly, speak the truth, speak justice, speak graciously, speak fairly, speak politely, speak no lie, speak gently, speak not in vain, and speak straight. Um, obviously, not everyone's going to follow these. As you probably know, there are bad seeds in all religion, but this goes on to a topic that I'm sure anyone who watches the news is going to know what I mean right off the bat, and that is the fact that uh, when ISIS came into play, 
that the that society, at least most of it, was saying that all Muslims, you know, must be with ISIS and blah blah blah. Pro Baptist doesn't resemble all Christians and things like that. You can't base people that were doing wrong and claimed to be religious themselves and following the religion um, to support their acts. And then you can't go around and say, oh, well, if these people were doing bad stuff, then, you know, all of them are doing this. And this one, a lot of verses get misinterpreted. Like, there's a big one in the Quran where it talks about killing the disbelievers. And if you are to research that, that's actually talking about self-defense and war. It says that if someone comes into your home or into your town and is trying to kill your family, kill the town, uh, kill your people, that you are allowed to act in self-defense. And that also is talking about when there was a war in Mecca. And I can actually find it right now. Actually, let me grab this. Does it's a 9-5, it says, kill the disbelievers wherever you find them. And then, if you look at the previous verses before this, a peace treaty is discussed. This is the context in the battlefield. He's telling his believers to stand up and fight. Um, in Islam, killing is actually forbidden. And there are verses that say, if you kill one person, it's like killing all of hu humanity. And if you save one person, it's like saving all of humanity. Um, but those verses, it was talking about when Muslims in Medina were getting ready to take Mecca and they were asking Muhammad, peace be upon him, what to do. They were asking for his advice and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told them to do. And it even says that it is better if you don't. So try to make a peace treaty and talk to them, try to give them a warning, and if all else fails, then kill them. And it says, only if they attack you first, only if they keep you from the Kaaba, if you don't know what the Kaaba is, it is the holy building in Mecca. So one of the verses that really stuck out to me that I got really confused about, and alhamdulillah now that I have clarity over, was Numbers 23:19. It says, God is not a man and God is not the son of man, but then if you go into the New Testament, multiple times it talks that he is the son of man. So, what do you mean? Um, a lot of people, and mostly coming from my family because they didn't really understand, you know, why I converted and things like that. They were like, oh, well, what about the tr Trinity? Uh, in Acts 2.22 it says, Jesus is a man sent by God. And in Islam, we believe that Jesus was a prophet sent down by God. And we don't believe in the Trinity. And I actually wrote down, I was listening to a lecture, I think this was about two months into me being a Muslim. And it gave the one plus one plus one equals three example. So one being the Father, one being the Son, and one being the Holy Ghost. And they were saying that three entitles forming one God. So we do believe that he is a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost figure, but in a sense where a woman could be a mother, a daughter, and a wife. Does that make sense? A lot of you were asking how my family reacted when they found out that I had reverted. Shh, such bugs. Did you guys see this? Like, are you joking me right now? And there's a dog in the door. And bye! He just shut the door on my door. <laughs> you little turd! He made you such a distraction. Um, they didn't react as bad as I thought they would. How I did it, I made a post on Facebook and Instagram with a picture of me with my hijab on. And I basically said, you know, I reverted. This is why I believe what I believe. And take it or leave it, pretty much. 
Oh. <laughs> um, so I remember telling my mom, hey, go look on my Facebook. And she called me right away like, what are you, back? She called me right away like, what are you doing? You're not going to be safe in America. And what about when you come home to travel? Which, um, I don't know now if it's going to be a problem, but when I did have my hijab on, I did get strip searched a couple times. But basically, they weren't mad, they were more concerned for my well-being, but other than that, um, mashallah, that they have um, become an understanding of my beliefs, and um, they do ask questions every once in a while, which um, I really like because then they get to hear my side, and they've been really respectful, and the people that don't necessarily like it don't really talk about it, so... So in a whole, why did I revert to Islam? Because it made sense. Um, it may not make sense to you or other people, but it's something that made sense to me. And regardless of the stance that I take, whether it be on a religious perspective or something else, I would never want to take something like that away from someone else. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, this was all my personal beliefs and the way that I stand in some certain subjects. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, make sure to leave it down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Assalamu alaikum.